Chantel Lee here with Sierra Image Films, and today I have the pleasure of being joined with the members of President Ernest Bayakaroma's delegation to this year's 68th session of the UN General Assembly in New York. And today I will have a few questions for each of them with us. And I would like to open up and start with Ajibu Jalo, um, Special Assistant in the Presidential Delegation. Um, could you give us an overview on what the MCC is currently visiting to speak upon in New Jersey? And what is the MCC about? Certainly. The MCC, Millennium Challenge Cooperation, is an agency of the United States based in Washington, D.C. And to give you a better overview, I might have to take you through Member Lane. We quite understand that back then, uh, there are countries that are being categorized as less than developed countries, uh, much so in Africa. And uh, through a meeting held in Washington, which is known today as the Washington Consensus, G8 countries, America and other countries that are rich, decided that they need to get together and determine how poverty could be reduced in Africa. And in so doing, they developed what they call today the Millennium Goals, eight of them which has to do with gender participation, has to do with uh, education for infant, has to do with infant mortality, and so on and so forth. Now, in trying to make sure these countries that are expected to meet this millennium goals actually meet those goals, the United States designed an incentive program. And that incentive program is the program that Millennium Challenge Cooperation attempts to manifest. And that program brings about 20 criterias that you should meet as a country. Once you meet those criterias, then you are, you're eligible to have uh, what they call a compact. A compact could mean uh, money from six to seven hundred million, which is specifically given to that country to be spent and a poverty reduction program, a program that will enhance the livelihood of its people. They've also established what they call a threshold. If you cannot meet 12 of the 20 elements that have been established, you can only meet six. Then you could be considered for what is called a threshold, which makes available about 50 million to be spent on just what I just spoke about. But what's important in all of that, three general criteria must be met. Which is? And those are, you must have control in place to control corruption. You must have a program in place to enhance participation of your people. And you must have a good rule of law. Sierra Leone just became eligible, uh, just passed October of 2012, with four other countries, namely Liberia, I believe Cape Verde, Senegal, and one other country that I can't remember. We are now expected to do the things that needs to be done to actually get the benefit, which includes establishing a secretariat, filling positions that have been established by Millennium Challenge Cooperation headquarters in United States, which has been done. We must also do what they call a constraint analysis, go out and find out what are the impediments, what are the things that are stopping us from achieving those, from goals. Achieving those goals. And we must attract people and opinions of all shapes and color. You must be very transparent in what you're doing. And these are all expectations that we have met. And the team is here now in the United States during the president's visit with a hope to meet out with the diaspora and community and to also explain to them what the requirements are and get their participation into the aspect of receiving the final prize, which is six to seven hundred million dollars, hopefully. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Ajibujala. 
special assistant. And I would like to move forward with my next question for Mr. Forte Mansouré as part of the presidential delegation. Would President Karoma be visiting New Jersey, and when and where would he go upon that visit? Yes, uh, President Karoma will be visiting New Jersey on the 22nd and the 23rd. Um, he will arrive in New Jersey somewhere around midday, and uh, the community will get together and receive the president as we have always done in the past. And uh, the community is geared up, and we believe it's going to be a great event. Um, the things that we have done to, to uh, um, receive the president will rally around the community organizations. One of them is the Serenian Community of New Jersey. Um, we have the other organization in New York, and the national one that is called um, Onslow in New York, and then we have Noslina from all around North America. So everybody have come together to make sure that whatever message the president have, you know, will be received by the Sierra Leonean people, making sure that everything that we have to do as people to support that process, that's what we're doing right now. And as a matter of fact, and uh, the president will be here not only on that Sunday. We are in. We have few um, things that we have planned, not specifically right now. But by say towards the end of the week, we'll get specific for people um, in areas where the president will visit. Whilst he will be here, so in New Jersey. In New Jersey, yes. So, so by by the end of the week, we should we'll be able to get specific what the president will be doing on Monday. Um, if there are programs where within the, the town of New Brunswick and Somerset. Oh, nice. Right here in our hometown. Yes. Very close. Um, moving forward with the Sierra Leonean people, my next question would also be, as a local here in both your participation in the presidential delegation, um, how would you say, how abundant would you say the support from the Sierra Leonean community here in New Jersey is? Indeed. Um, the Sierra Leonean community here in Franklin Township, New Brunswick area, out of, say, for example, of uh, 66,000 people in Franklin Township, we're about um, 12,000. Oh. And um, that population is rising. And uh, we, all of that uh, base that we have, including members in Philadelphia, Washington, Metropolitan, we've, we've sensitized all of that to make sure everybody comes here on that day to support the president and receive the message, just like what Mr. Ajibu have said, and um, the messages that other people will also give part of the delegation will give here, then uh, we believe it's going to be a success. Yes, everyone seems to be involved. Yes. I'm moving forward with Ms. Minister of Lenny Potential, Mr. Minister Leroy Capscan. Uh, my next question for you would be, uh, could you tell us what can we expect to see from President Karoma's visit to the UN General Assemblies, and where else will he be going from there? Okay, um, thank you very much for the question. Yeah, President Koroma will be addressing the UN General Assembly. As you know, every year the leaders of the world meet at the UN to address a specific issue. So he'll be here to address the General Assembly. But uh, something that I want to add also is that um, President Koroma is highly respected in the United Nations. Talking about expectations. Is highly respected in the United Nations because uh, he took over a country, I mean, he won elections in a country that was torn by civil war. There had been killings and um, destruction and all kinds of uh, deadly stuff, but he has been able to stabilize the country. I he, has been, on that. he has been able to bring complete peace. Yeah, I'm so uh, to, to the extent that the United Nations regards Sierra Leone as a model for peace consolidation, for peace building and peace consolidation in the world. So you can know that that's a big distinction that our country has, that we are a model of the, the UN peace building structure. So you know that um, he's highly regarded. And then not only that, when he came to the country, yeah, we didn't have light. We had a, 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 our infrastructure was dilapidated. So, from the war. Yes, from the war and from also age. age. But he has been able to put up some massive uh, 
the infrastructural development in the country. Now we have electricity, we have good roads, and uh, many Sierra Leoneans are proud of their country. And this news filtered into the, into the to UN, and the people there too have high regard for him. So when he addresses the, 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 the when he stands before the podium to address the UN, he's going to be regarded. He's going to be looked at as one of the most progressive, one of the most productive heads of state addressing that that uh, August assembly. So of course. It's a big achievement to Sierra Leoneans to have a president who is so highly regarded by the UN. You see, and um, so many Sierra Leoneans will be coming out that day to, to, to be at the UN to, to see him address the assembly. Okay, um, thank you for answering yeah. my question. Then you question. said, you said uh, where else will he be going? And what else will he be doing upon his visit here? Okay, well, he'll be coming to New Jersey. Uh, he'll be coming to New Jersey. <coughs> because um, he cares for his people. You know that, uh, or you don't know what, uh, as we can, those who know can recall, um, it has been a very difficult year for us in New Jersey. We have lost many people, some of some members of the, the community lost their lives, some got sick, and a lot of things happened to them and they died, so. About his people, has decided to pay a visit to New Jersey to console the families, to make sure that he talks to the families, to um, sympathize with them. The other Sierra yes. Leone Sierra family, Leone. the family, yes. the family of the, of the family and the, uh, the family of the that have been affected. The affected, and then also the general uh, the population to talk to them. I mean, possibly tell them that well, these are things that happen, but we should take comfort, you know. He's here, he'll be here to comfort the Sierra Leone people because of the things that happened. Then also he'll be visiting um, the Essex County College. Okay. Because we had a meeting there yesterday and then the purpose of, the, of that meeting is uh, it's going to be exposed to lots of in industries that want to invest in Sierra Leone. You know, one of the achievements of the president is that he has made an uh, investment to flow into the country. He has made Sierra Leone to be one of the easiest countries to do business. To invest in. To invest. So because of that, um, the news has come here and everybody wants to go to invest there. So that meeting will be, one of the purpose of that meeting will be to get, um, to bring him in touch with these in industries and people who want to go invest in Sierra Leone. And then also the Essex County College wants to establish an exchange program with the university in Sierra Leone. It's for exchange students. Students, exchange pro program with Fabi College, the University of Sierra Leone. So that is one of the reasons why he's going to Essex County College. Um, thank you so much, Minister Lenny Potential, Minister Leroy Capscan, mm -hmm. uh, for your time. And moving forward with Dr. Francis Dove Edwin, uh, my next question for you would be, uh, having lived both in the U.S. and in Freetown, what can we expect uh, from the meeting which has been organized within New Jersey? Well, my expectation uh, is um, I realize that uh, Sierra Leone has come of age. We're looking at what is called direct democracy. I mean, direct democracy was first enacted by the Vikings when they decided that whether they should build ships to sail across to northern Scotland. So what I'm expecting out of this is that Sierra Leoneans will be given an opportunity to talk directly to their president. This is the purpose of town hall meeting, where the president comes down, there's no barrier, there's not a third person, and you can actually stand up and have the opportunity to express the good side and the bad side of what your experiences have been in Sierra Leone and as a diasporan that I've lived in both areas. It's an open dialogue whereupon, because most of the programs that the president will talk about, for instance, the MCC, which is an American initiative, is governance and democracy and empowerment for people to come out of poverty. So this is an opportunity that is an int integrational program that will incorporate all of Sierra Leoneans, both at home and abroad. And my expectation is that this direct democracy, democratical approach by the president and taking that initiative to come 
to speak to the people. I'm hoping for us to have a tete-a-tete -tete dialogue with our president. Okay, um, that should be very beneficial. It will be able to answer everyone's questions and doubts as well and open the floor for many wonderful suggestions and other progressive things to come in the future. Uh, once again, this is Chantel and I am joined here with the members of the presidential delegation for Ernest by Karoma and they have been wonderful enough to answer some questions for us. Thank you very much for being involved with us. Sierra.